to the Worstest Podcast on the Interwebs. I am your host, Captain Boring, and alongside me is my first mate, Mr. Cocaine himself of excitement. Cocaine? Yeah. We are the 4th and 1 Podcast, anchor.fm slash 4th and 1, on Instagram, at 4th and 1 Podcast. Welcome to week 12 of college football there are only two weeks left baby can you believe that i'm eating chips yeah yeah, you're eating chips and the sound's still going and and i was letting you finish up the intro before i cut off the sound that was pretty much the intro i am attempting to use my laptop again however i do have my wife's as a backup so if it does probably crash on me again i will be able to plug right in and just go watch i mean Watch Timmy and be right again. About what? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, uh, now is your moment. You may gloat. Your lock of the week hit. You took um, the over-under of 60. Of Here's the deal. I'm the best there is, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I piss excellence. You took the over, uh, you took the under of 60, Miami, Florida State. It ended up, do you know what it ended up at? No clue. Yeah, 59. So congrats, <laughs> congratulations. I was trying to remember what game that we fought so yeah, hard on. It, yep, it, it was that one. And, okay. and you won by a point. So congratulations. One more point and it would have been a push. So I had a terrible week last week. I went a whopping 2-6. and six. Yikes. However, my it was a weird week it, across it, the ball. It was, however, my overall record was thirty-seven and twenty-six. And by the way, the two and six was not only my picks on who would win, but then also the bets I told you to take on that game. So, yikes! So yeah, but I still got a good record. I got two, I got a couple more weeks to rebound. Plus, I got bowl season coming up here. So, you know what? Uh, we're going to finish off strong. A uh, little hiccup along the way. You know, just a little road bump. little Michigan State in my road. And we're going to uh, hit Penn State, hit Indiana, hit Maryland, and then take a shot at Ohio State. But that's... I see what you did there. Thank Roadrunners you. are still undefeated. Roadrunners are still undefeated. Uh, Houston, Best team in Texas. Changing my mind. Houston. I can't. I can't change your mind. Houston's finally ranked, which is good news for Cincinnati. They are one Cincinnati SMU play this weekend. Is that a spoiler alert to my top five biggest games? It is, guys. Uh, you just have to ruin all my fun. Uh, oh, that's what I do. Utah got ranked, which is good news for Oregon. Is that one of my top five biggest games? Maybe. You'll all never tell. It, it is. Uh, yeah, and so that's where we're at. So, everyone, without further ado, it is time for La Checkdown. Nah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Our whistle sound broke randomly. Um, we're just going to go straight into the sound. All right. I'm so glad we're doing this with the food in our mouth. Oh, my goodness. All righty. Well, UConn. Looking for some sense of competitiveness, has went out and hired Jim Moore. Jim Moore was uh, a coach with the Atlanta Falcons, and most recent playoffs. Not Jim Moore. No. Oh, who am I thinking of? Uh, you are thinking of his dad. Uh, um. And. I don't know where I was going. Oh, and Jim Moore more recently was at UCLA. Before yeah, he was fired and let go, and he's kind of been on some staffs around as assistants uh, in the NFL and uh, yeah, at Alabama. So he's going to try to turn UConn around, and really, he doesn't have to do much. He basically just needs to make a bowl game, which is you win five games. I think that's very doable. If you're you, like you, you're not asking. Are they independent? They are. So yeah. You're, so that's even more doable. Yeah, you're not asking him to come in and win a natty or make a New Year six. You're just asking them to win six games a year. You're in a great part of recruiting land up there in the Northeast. Uh, you, you got some good uh, prospects up there. So I, I think if he can just get just some. 
competitive juice is going through that. Oh, he's an offensive assistant right now at UConn. He took a couple of years off there. So he took the offensive assistant job at UConn so he could start recruiting. Oh. And kind of evaluate the team. Thank you for turning that down, by the way. Yeah, I realized that was super loud. Sorry, everyone. So when one man gets hired, another man gets fired. Jimmy Lake coached a total of 13 games at Washington and has been fired. Was this the guy who, wait, Washington? Yeah, Washington. So he, I was thinking of Washington so, State. So Chris yeah. Peterson left in at the end of the 2019 season. Jimmy Lake, the defensive coordinator, who had a couple good defensive recruiting classes in there, was hired, had the shortened COVID 2020 season, and now has been a disappointment here in uh, Washington. So Washington becomes another big time program to have its doors open. I mean, Washington is kind of on the same level as USC and LSU in terms of how prestige that program is. I mean, it wasn't, it was 2017, it was four years ago, Washington was in the CFP playing Alabama. And getting destroyed. And well, they got destroyed, but they made it. Uh, under Chris Peterson, they won in his three or four years there. They won all three division titles. They won two Pac-12 championship games. They made a college football playoff appearance. So again, this program has high standards. Jimmy Lake wasn't measuring up. Also, what happened to Jimmy Lake, uh, there was an incident on the sideline where he appeared to strike a player in the helmet uh, after the player did something dumb. There was an investigation. Apparently, another incident didn't came up from 2019 so it just it just wasn't a good fit so washington let, let's see uh let's see in what direction they go and when the firing just keeps on coming justin fuente the head coach of virginia tech for six seasons has also been let go again it was just one of those things he came from memphis before mike norvell took that job over who then left for florida state and virginia tech was kind of down in the dumps kind of made them sort of competitive but in his six years they never really advanced they made one acc championship game against clemson when they got blown where they got blown out they just it, it was too much up and down, and they were looking for more consistency. And when they, it was too much down rather than up. So Virginia Tech looks to move on. And finally, Cam Newton has made his return to the NFL in quite the way. In his first two snaps, returning to the NFL in Carolina this past weekend, he scored two touchdowns as the Carolina Panthers beat the Arizona Cardinals in an upset. And he is getting the start this week for Carolina. So, Cam Newton is back. I mean, maybe also shout out to our... I mean, that was shout out to our cousin for calling that an upset of the... Yeah, but if you really look at it, it really wasn't year. an upset because the Andre Hopkins and David Moore and Kyler Murray were all out for the Cardinals. Oh, so well, yeah. Mm, Womp womp. It's all right. My the cousin uh, when Michigan, who beat Penn State this week, twenty one seventeen. As I'm kind of jumping into the uh, weekend review section here, he texted me because he's a Penn State fan. He goes, "Well, R.I.P. Michigan." And that was when Cade McNamara had the fumble and Penn State kicked the field goal to go ahead. And then not even three minutes later. Uh, K. McNamara found Eric all down the sideline for 47 yards and a touchdown, and <laughs> it di it didn't. He then sent me a text that said, "Well, that aged poorly for me." <laughs> and that, wait, who is this? Elliot. Oh, so uh, so even the joke was I made, and if you were kind of following along on Instagram or if you follow me on Instagram, I, I made the joke that who who's who wants to be who they are more. Does Michigan want a Michigan, which means mess it up? Or does Penn State want a Penn State, which again is just another form of mess it up? And we kind of talked about this, but James Franklin, people don't realize Penn State is 2-12 and 12 against top 10 opponents since James Franklin's been there. And people give Harbaugh a hard time for being 2-9 and nine against ranked teams. And against... 
Ohio State, Franklin is one and six. Like so, Yikes. so everyone wants Franklin to be to take the LSU or USC job. Do you really? Then there was questionable calls in that Michigan game. So from the two yard line on the first drive, they already faked the punt, and instead of fourth and goal, sending the offense back out to try to get a point uh, to go for it, they faked the field goal and they didn't get it which cost them three points. And then on fourth and five, after Michigan has scored and stopped them, what had worked the previous drive where they converted three fourth downs against Michigan, they ran, which was little hook routes right at the sticks or pick routes, uh, where one player kind of rubs the defender and sets a pick for uh, on the defender for the, another offensive player to get open. They ran a fade route against Michigan's best corner, shutdown cover corner, which did not work at all. Uh, and so Penn State just Penn Stated more than Michigan. Michigan, even though Michigan tried, Penn State wanted to Michigan or Penn Penn State wanted to Penn State more, and so now Michigan has a date with Maryland. I watched most of this, which we'll be at shout out. Yeah, shout fourth out fourth and one going on the Park. road. Also, I don't have any Michigan gear, so I I, I outgrew it all. <clears throat> I'm 23, so I got fat. Yeah, um, yeah, you <laughs> got fat. I was just about to say, so you got fat. Uh, hold on, I have a soundbite. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so we'll be going on the road there to College Park, Maryland. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, I feel like Penn State doesn't necessarily Penn State more. I feel like James Franklin, James Franklin more. And I've been hearing this from different Penn State guys and them, him wanting to go. <laughs> He's probably a hot spot for the USC job. Yeah, if I, he were I, to I, leave, I, but well, honestly, it, doesn't he have to at this point? I mean, if I'm Penn State, yeah, you had a couple good years under Bill O'Brien. You got back up where you're a, a number, you're a fighting team. But also, moreover, who in the F are you bringing in at Penn State? Well, you could go back to Bill O'Brien, who's the OC at Alabama right now. Yeah, but he left so fast, I don't think he wants to be coaching a, a, a program. Like, he clearly wanted to be an NFL coach. So the, the, the problem with Bill O'Brien, well, Penn State owes, Franklin owes all of his ex- success to Bill O'Brien. Oh, 100%. Because, Penn, Penn, because Bill uh, O'Brien kept Penn State afloat. Right, and relevant after the Sandusky. Incident. After the Sandusky and the sanctions there, that he would definitely be welcomed back with open arms by the Penn State faithful, I think. But I, it's more to your point. When you go to the school of Sabin, as it's called, when you're a coordinator and you learn how to basically re-coach, you're hoping yeah. to land that big-time Texas, USC, Washington, LSU. You, Which you could you could see him going to one of those. But, but not after one year. I can see him going to Penn State after one year because it's Penn State. Yeah, Penn State's a big time program. Penn State's a national, historically right. a national power. But, yeah. but like LSU, you're not going to go to Saban's staff and plug Bill O'Brien after one year after what happened in Houston. Yeah, that's the issue. But but Penn it's State the fact doesn't. that he clearly wanted to be a. He clearly wanted to be an NFL head coach. He left Penn State too fast, and that's the issue that he's going to have behind him. He was a good NFL head coach. He was a terrible NFL GM. So everybody that. that. You don't trade away the best wide receiver in the game. Well, and also it comes out that he was trying to get fired. I think we covered this on the podcast, that he, he actually made that trade because he wanted to get fired and try to take the um, New England job, I think, or join Belichick, or anyway, it didn't work out. It, like oh, it, it was one of those go back to New England, right? It was one of those things. So anyway, I could see, I could see O'Brien, but if you're Penn State, it's one of those. Michigan's kind of in the same situation, or was, is yeah. if you fire Harbaugh, fire Franklin, who else are you going to bring in that's better? Well, here's the thing. The- 
You have there's two names that I think you have. The the only two names that would be allowed, I think, in state college. Luke Fickle and Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell, the the, the head coach at Iowa State. Uh, Matt Campbell, Dan Campbell, Matt Campbell. the head coach of the Detroit Lions. Sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I bad, mean, guys. they would be happy with Dan Campbell. State College would They'd be, be happy a, with Dan no, Campbell, too. I don't think he's going anywhere. Well, but again, I, I, I would <laughs> add that third in Bill O'Brien. I, I, Yeah, I think, but knowing Penn State, it's kind of Luke Fickle or bust at this point, unless James Franklin gives you... Because that's the only, and that's if Luke Fickle wants to leave. We'll get we'll get further into this at the end of the season. I don't want to dwell on this too much. I do, but have more stuff it, to break it, down. It definitely is a interesting thing, um, an yeah. interesting situation. So question and situation. So you had college. you sent me a picture on Instagram that yeah, had I don't know now. who it was from. You can do the shout out that basically gave the weekend the the takeaways from week what is ten. FB sidelines and pick six CFB, which is a bigger name. I guess you can do, oh, not the huge name. And it was takeaways from week eleven. Uh, t- takeaway from week ten. Okay, we're in week eleven. Okay, so it was two weeks ago. No, this is week nope. eleven. It's ten days ago. Okay, it was from ten days ago. Yes. Yeah, so okay, all right, but go ahead because it's still relevant. But go ahead. Uh, number one, uh, Florida, Dan Mullen's time as Florida's head coach has come to So a this even got even worse. If that was 10 days ago, this got worse over this past weekend. Dan Mullen's almost lost to an FCS school, Samford. That's not yeah. Stanford. That's S-A-M. They are uh, Connecticut College. F-O-R-D. Sam Ford. He was losing 49 to 28 in the first half. It's the most points that Florida has ever given up in the first half to any school at any moment at any period of time. Okay? They did rebound uh, to hold them to uh, hold Samford to seven second half points and they end and the score ended up 70 to 56. The problem is this comes a week after Dan Mullins fired his defensive coordinator, who he was friends with, in Todd Grantham, and promoted who he thought was the next best thing. And then you go out and let an FCS school who's not very good, who has a sub-500 record in the FCS, hang 56 on you. You're going to have some questions. Now, I originally thought that Dan Cam or... Wow, Matt Campbell? Matt, nope, not Matt Campbell. Dan Mullins, oh, uh, there we go. Was only has only been there for three years, so I was like, "Why are people calling for his firing?" He just no. he just got he's been there four years already. Mm-hmm. It, it's going to get really tough for him, <laughs> extremely tough. I think that Florida will give him another year, and if they don't, that will be another big time school to kind of open up. And if Florida does. Uh, fire! Look at Urban Meyer. Yeah, I know people, but Urban, I he can't resist the challenge of going back. And how poetic would it be that Saban ran Meyer out of town? Saban ran Meyer to Ohio State, and then Meyer right. might run Saban to retirement. So, I mean, I don't. <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna go over on the coaching carousel. Yeah, at the end we of the we will. I'm looking at forward the, to that at the end of the I season. Think, yeah, I think. Uh, if I'm Florida, you can also look at the two Coastal Carolina, you it, and uh, Monroe coaches. That that opens that question it, up there. But it was, and and this kind of uh, one of the this kind of jumps. Sorry, University of Louisiana, not Monroe. Th- this kind of jumps into your next or one of the points on there about Texas. Yeah, uh, this one was stupid, even from my perspective. Texas needs to fire Steve yeah. Sarkeesian. So again, it's kind of funny that was. 10 days ago, because on Saturday... Even worse. It, they lost to Kansas. Kansas had not beaten a Big 12 opponent on the road in 56 games. They had an 18-game conference losing streak. They had a whole bunch of these bad losing streaks that they snapped on Saturday night against Texas on the road. They beat them in overtime 55-56. to 56. 
You, you can't fire Steve Sarkeesian. Listen, these are main... Yes, Texas is talented. Yes, they probably should have won just based on talent, but that's Texas's problem. Texas is under um, Herman. They were a... We are Texas, we're better, and we're just going to beat you because we're better. Steve Sarkeesian is trying to instill... I want guys who want to go out play football. They want to show up to practice. They want to sit there in the film room. They want to do the hard work because they want the glory, not just because we're Texas. And so he's trying to find those guys. Uh, he does have one of the best running backs in the nation in B. John Robinson. Again, they put up points, but defensively, they're just not there. They're conditioning. So it's it's five straight losses or six straight losses. For Texas, I think it's five straight, something they that they haven't done since 1956. So, um, a, even more of a case can be made. It's a dumb case, but Steve Sarkeesian should absolutely not be fired. He needs minimum four years to get his recruits in and for them to be upperclassmen. You have to wait yeah. for all of these kids he's recruiting to grow up, pump the weights, eat the protein and play big boy football and learn how to actually win and be a championship level team. Next question. Also, shout out to uh what is his name? Lance Leopold. I'm a, I'm assuming Lance Leopold. Boston? Yes, the yeah. coach of Kansas done a terrific job was the coach at Buffalo. Yeah, led them got, and he's come around. Got the job late at Kansas because they Fired Les Miles late yep. because of the scandal, and yep. has real. I mean, Kansas is a terrible job. Yeah, and he's going to turn around, give him three, another two, three years. You need, you, you need Kansas to get is going to be winning seven, eight games. Yeah, to recruit over Les Miles guys. Um, the interesting here is yikes. This team is getting more and more unimpressive by the week. And we're talking about who? Alabama. So, sort of, but you're comparing Alabama to 2020 20 and 2019 Alabama, where their offenses were off the Chiang, the chain, okay? Last year, especially with Mac Jones, but people forget because Joe Burrow was so dominant, that Tua team that he had in 2019 and that roster was putting up points and was very efficient. And then the next year, it was kind of all the holdovers from that team that Mac Jones then uh, took undefeated, and their offense was ridiculous. Alabama this week, they played some garbage team, San Houston State, blew them out by 50 cents. North, North Dakota State. They didn't play North Dakota State. They played, sorry, they played... New Mexico State. New Mexico State, thank you. Uh, and, and they blew them out by 50. It wasn't a game. It was the first time they look impressive. The, the thing that's a little bit different about this Alabama team is they can't really run the football consistently, which I sort of find concerning, where they don't run the football consistently. In their two biggest games where they haven't looked good, Texas A&M and then a couple of weeks ago and then – whoever they played a couple weeks ago, Tennessee, they had six, not Tennessee, but the week before that, they had six yards of rushing. That's just not going to get it done. And that's very unsaving like I think it's, every team is a new team, and I think Saban's still trying to build the culture with this Alabama team a little bit. What So what is concerning to me about this, out or unimpressive about, is their lack of running ability, and the fact that people were praising that this Alabama, Nick Saban defense was his best ever, and they're just turning out to be mediocre. Especially on the back end, and so they're giving up a lot of yards. Definitely a beatable Alabama team. De definitely not an Alabama team from 2020. Absolutely. Mm, no, not at all. Uh, the last one here, as I pull it, uh, the last two here, well, three, sorry. But they're kind of are all Michigan State is a fraud. That, that Sort of. So everyone's looking at Michigan State like, oh, my gosh, they're Michigan State. Be they, they beat Michigan. In that game, that uh, they had 187 yards passing and two interceptions. Michigan was drive was on the 
plus side of the 50, meaning Michigan State side of the 50, when J.J. McCarthy fumbled the football. They just got the ball back, three-point lead. Michigan probably goes down, kicks a field goal. Their defense gets a little bit of a break, and they probably stop Kenneth Walker, if I had a guess, because they had seen enough of Kenneth Walker at that point. But Michigan State can put up points. Michigan State can absolutely score the football. It's going to be a high-scoring game. The over-under 66. It's it's going to be a high-scoring game down there in Columbus this weekend. I don't think Michigan State's a fraud. Michigan, they had, is a top-five team unquestionably. I... My respect. That was the that was their next point. That was their next. Michigan's a top five. Right, team. right. Which is kind of what I was trying to say. I, Michigan's a good team. My problem is is if you're going to put Michigan top five, that means you're kicking out Cincinnati, and I just I'm just not there yet. Like I I can't do it to Cincinnati. They, they're still undefeated. They're still. I I do think that Michigan is talented and mentally tough enough now to be a top five team. I just can't kick them out of the top five and then what's the last point on there that Cincinnati should be a deserves to be a top six team which we are both disagreeing with you just disagreed with you said they should be top five yeah absolutely I I think that they always should have been a top four team because it's hard to be undefeated and they do have a road win at the number eight team in the country right now and it and they dominated all of that game against Notre Dame. So absolutely. Yeah. Hey, since we just wrapped up, I have a question. Well, I mean, for we you. didn't wrap up. I have other things to cover, but go ahead. <sighs> go ahead. I know are I'm Captain Boring. Are, yeah, I'm Captain. Are you going to be boring this I'm week? I'm Captain Boring, probably, but go ahead. Okay, who's the best one loss team? Uh, that's oh, his thinking oh. noises, by the way. Um, well, that's easy. That's Ohio State. Okay, <laughs> let me re-ask the question. Okay. <laughs> Who's the best one-loss team outside of the top six? Oklahoma State, probably. That's not who I thought you were going to say. It's either Oklahoma State or Michigan State. Okay, they're number seven. Way to way to really stretch well, no. the rope there, okay. buddy. Okay, well, well then fine. Then Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State it, right now. Oklahoma State and Michigan are the exact same team. They are really good defense, no big plays, running the football, and then taking downfield shots and timely passing and quarterback play. They right now are the exact same team, and with the way Oklahoma played on Saturday, which was a loss to Baylor, since yep. since that's in my weekend review and I'm Captain Boring and I'm not allowed to do anything exciting on the podcast, you would have to think that Oklahoma State in Bedlam uh, the next weekend, this weekend, next weekend, next weekend, because I would be covering yeah, it's it. It's going to be rivalry weekend. Is you got to think Oklahoma State's got to be favored there because Oklahoma, this is the first time I saw Oklahoma on Saturday where Lincoln Riley had zero answers. When Lincoln Riley can't run the football, his off- transition. his offenses, thank you, are very mediocre. Like, I don't know what they ran for on Saturday, but it, every time I was turning in, it was a three yard loss, three yard loss. I mean, it was, they were like running in mud on Saturday against Baylor. And if you flip it over and look at the positive from Baylor's side, Oklahoma had 82 yards rushing, point proven. Meanwhile, Baylor had 297. They both had two turnovers. One had nine, one had seven penalties. So it was a pretty fair, even game throughout. It was just Oklahoma couldn't run the football. And so if you're Lincoln Riley, you have got to figure out this running game when Caleb Williams can't run the football. Caleb Williams was benched for a quarter. They brought in Spencer Rattler again. That didn't go well because they couldn't run the football. Even worse with Spencer Rattler. And then there was some little thing at the end. They took a kneel down. Fans, Baylor did. Fans rushed the field. Then Baylor called a timeout to kick a field goal. They cited some tie-breaking rule that is like fourth down on the list if it ends in a tie. 
And and so Oklahoma players were already in the locker room. Fans were on the field. Lincoln Riley was upset. Dude, just take the L. Then Lincoln Riley was like, I'm... It's not sportsman like who cares? Just let him kick the field goal and go home. Make him feel better about himself. You didn't even have to, you know, if they wanted to score an extra touchdown, whatever. Who who cares? Don't even field the team at this point. Just don't be petty at all. I have an idea that would shake the college football world. All right, well bring oh, it in. Bring it in. Carrie's got an idea, bring it in. ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Hold on. There's a sound bite for us for the internet. We have a breaking <laughs> college football <laughs> idea from Terry Schlicker. Terry, let us have it. So um, I had this bright idea that I think there should be a season where you take all of the college football coaches, put their names in a bowl. Everybody picks a name. That's your coach for the season. See if it's actually the coach doing a good job. See if it's the program. See what happens. Because then you have good coaches going to shitty schools and see what they can do. Dookie's licking your plate. Yeah, that was pretty much Sorry, done. Sorry, man. Oh, well, okay, you are, you're done, done now. Kind of how, like, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick? Yeah. Sure. Oh, well, frick. I, Mackay can't hear me, so he can't figure he out said, what, like, if Tom I'm Brady doing it. He said, like, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick? Oh, like Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. You know, it's not the worst idea you've ever had. It, Thank you. It, it's not your best. It needs some work, but, you know... How does it need and work? Like, it's a simple idea. Um, the fact that it would never happen. And, well, and, and the fact it would never happen, as Simeon just said. But I think it should happen. Well, well I'm going to call that'd college football. That'd be pretty football. dope. You, uh, if college fo- you call college football. I'm going to call Kirk Herbstreit. I'll uh, make it happen. Yes, Kirk Herbstreit will make it yeah, happen. He has all the power. Yeah. Yes, Kirk Herbstreit, 100% of the power. <laughs> um, but also, um, yeah, not your worst idea, but maybe in like 50 years when college football is boring again, we mm-hmm. can, we, we'll, we'll try that. I'll write it down. All right. I'll put it in my will. Yeah, put it in your will, write it down, call Kirk Herbstreit, uh, send also, him a DM. Okay, and also copyright it. Yeah, copyright the idea so you get paid. Thank you. Yep, all right. all right. You're welcome. Thanks, Mom. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. That was the mom of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, Carrie. What things? Oh, yeah, his bed frame's still here. Your bed frame's still in our upstairs, by the way. My full-size bed frame is still in the upstairs of the room. Yep. If anybody wants it, I will give it away for free. It's very nice. It's about six oh, inches Oh, well, off if you're giving it away for free, you know, we'll probably use it eventually. Yeah, that's kind of my thought okay, process. Okay, um... Like. <laughs> so, um... You see Wisconsin? They've won six straight. Wisconsin is a legitimate... Whoever gets through this gauntlet in the Big Ten East, they got to run into Wisconsin's nasty defense. Wisconsin's no longer turning the ball over. They're running. They're getting Brayson Allen, 6'2", 240. He basic, he's basically the reincarnation of Derrick Henry, who's kind of weird because weird that's a weird saying because he's still alive. But, you know. Um, and injured. And injured. Yeah. Uh, Maybe it's Derrick Henry just reliving his college days. <coughs> uh, Sorry, Flynn. Ohio State, Michigan State this week. I'll get into that a little bit. You got to make them march down the field. Purdue just didn't make them work at all, and it was it was a rout by halftime. So that uh, uh, the Purdue didn't even keep it within twenty. Uh, meanwhile, the Florida State game just quickly there. Florida State gets a big win over Miami who had won four straight at that point and then much needed and then Miami kind of mismanages the game so Florida State hits a big play is down at the half yard line about to score a touchdown to take the lead with 40 seconds left Miami has two timeouts so Simeon if you're if you're a coach in this situation yeah your opponent you're up uh, four right they're about to score a touchdown I'm up four my team's up four. your team's up four you have two timeouts left Okay. The opposing team's on the half yard line. Okay. Do you let them score a touchdown to yep. savor the 40 seconds and the two timeouts? Or do you try to stop them and burn your timeouts? My guys would rather have the chance. So I'm going to just say don't play defense, let them walk in. And have two timeouts and 40 I, seconds that, left. That is my thing as well. Because, and the ball in the 25. Because, listen, if, if this is a... Unless they want to squib it to me. If this is... I'll take the ball in the 40. If this is the last... 
if the, if if a QB sneak, which is what Florida State ran twice before, so what Miami did was they did the latter. They stopped them twice on a quarterback sneak, burned both their timeouts, and then got it on the third try. But now they're down to it ended up being like twenty five seconds, yeah, and no timeouts, and to try to go down and kick a field goal instead of. Um, instead of letting them score. And they're probably going to score anyway. And this isn't like there are five seconds left in the game and now they're trying to sneak it in, right? Right. Then, obviously, try to stop them because you don't have enough time. You have 40 seconds left. Clock stops with first... Every first down, right at that point, I'm playing for OT, so I want my defense rested anyway. Yeah. So, so what? So get get pull the defense off the field, get them rested, or or line up like you're gonna stop them, like line up so that they think for, that you're dude, gonna go stop stand them. in the corner, and, and then I don't care. And then at the snap of the ball, just tell your defensive tackles just lay down, let them score, and now you got the ball back. Yeah. And you only need three points. Oh, but you have an explosive offense that had been that started to be explosive towards the end of the game. Yep. And two timeouts. You can go for the win. But anyway, yeah. so they mismanaged the game and again, it's Florida schools. You brought up this point. Florida schools just non disciplined, being mismanaged by their head coaches. I don't coaches. know what it is. No, that's exactly what, what you said. And I have a good respect for who's that what Manny Danny? Diaz. Manny Diaz. Good respect for Manny Diaz. Someone else who would never do it, but who Penn State wouldn't mind to have as their head coach. But continue on. North, he's not leaving. North he's not Carolina leaving. State lost to Wake in a shootout, 48-45 or 45-42. You did? Yeah, I did. North Carolina I thought State. You were stupid for calling. North that. Carolina State was 14 penalties for 119 yards, and they had three turnovers. Let me introduce you to a foot surgeon, North Carolina State. You basically gave the game to Wake. So, Wake, you survive only to have to take on Clemson this week. By the way, Clemson's not out of it. Wake Almost lost to UConn. <laughs> yeah, okay. They didn't cover. They didn't cover, but they still won by uh, 36. Clemson, by the way, if Wake Force loses this week and next week and Clemson wins out, Clemson's back in the title game. How crazy would wow. that be? Clemson seven and three, sneakily kind of finding their rhythm a little bit. You know who else is seven and three? Who's that? Wisconsin. Next game. Next game. <laughs> <laughs> Old Miss got a big win over Texas A and M. I picked Texas A and M. I think you did as well. And yet they're still ranked. Texas A. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know how Iowa's ranked either at this point. I, I, I was not ranked. I, yeah, they are. They're like twentieth. Or seventeenth. Look it up. I just had I just had ESPN up. Where did you go? So anyway, right, Old Miss. Uh, the one thing Old Miss couldn't do was stop the run. The one thing Texas A and M do could do was run the football. The one thing uh, oh, yeah, Texas A and M could do Ooh. is stop the run. And the one thing Old Miss couldn't do was run the football against good defenses. And the script completely flipped. Old Miss ran up and down on Texas A and M. And they their defense stopped the run, and it was a blowout in the first half. It was thirteen to zero, but it felt like thirty five nothing. Texas A and M made a little bit of a rally, and then Old Miss pulled away late. So that's a big time win. And USC, LSU, now Washington, they're all going to be looking at Lane Kiffin. Simeon, don't you think that Old Miss is a good job for Lane Kiffin? I mean, it's a party school, the Grove. He he just has that party vibe. Listen, you can recruit in Mississippi if you're good yeah. at it. Yeah, like, and you Mississi- can recruit at Old Miss, too. Well, well, that is Mississippi. Thank you. Mississippi's got some high school talent. Well, I thought you were talking about, you know, Mississippi, Mississippi State are like nine miles away from each other sort of right but i'm saying in the state of mississippi there are good high school football that's what i'm saying yeah yeah yes Yes. good stupid high school football players okay that's a joke because mississippi has horrible education and they need help but um (laughs) no i think it is a good school for him i think of all of like the shuffling that the sec coaches have seen in the past four years i think that's the one that's working out the best is Lane Kiffin at Old Miss. Hey, yes. I and again, he's kind of the prime candidate for 
why you go to the school of Saban Hard Knocks. Right. Who's that? Well, like, basically the entire SEC has been at the school of Saban Hard Knocks from one time or another. Uh, uh, sort of, but I think Kiffin... Of, like, I the think, blue collar. So I think Kiffin did it right. He left Bama to take a very low-level, off-the-radar job at Florida Atlantic, where there's good recruiting. He can kind of He can kind of set what he wants his brand to be. He could set what he wanted and fi- kind of yeah. find his footing of being on his own yeah. and then took a big kind of national job at Old Miss. So I, I I think what what Sark is kind of finding out is... You, so Sark is trying to build his own brand and his own kind of mentality of what he wants a football oh, team to look at. But he's in the Texas Hello Spotlight yeah, you got to win the guy, a natty every year. Who was the guy who went to Florida International that was on Sabins? Did the same exact thing. Remember, he, he, Kiffin, he, uh, uh, didn't he just get fired, Butch Jones? No, that was that's 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 USF, I think. See, this is why it's confusing because like well, a bunch of, Nick used, Saban had a bunch of people, yeah, and then well, they all left, right? Well, F- and then FIU some of them came did back. just fire their coach. Speaking of just look Florida Atlantic. Uh, meanwhile, Georgia's defense stifles Tennessee. However, Tennessee kind of with their up-tempo system showed at least started no, the... it was Butch Davis. I'm sorry. Started the blueprint of how you can maybe kind of take a chink out of this uh, Georgia defense. Georgia's defense also lost two defensive linemen. So just keep a look on for that. Yeah, Georgia has a lot of depth, but uh, just kind of maybe chinks are starting to form in the Georgia defense. So Tennessee maybe started the blueprint there. I touched on Michigan and Penn State already in terms of Franklin. Harbaugh is, which I thought was note, is fit is now fifteen and sixteen in November through January. So that's in November, and then the bowl game trending the right way. It's trending the right way. However, I texted you before the game that I was probably going to call for Harbaugh's job because at that point in the day they were losing. Yep, I remember that. At this point, I'm okay if he leaves, but I like how he rebranded himself and got back to who he was, and I think that the addition of Mike Hart, the Michigan all-time leading rusher, Hassan Haskins and Blake Corm have just been outstanding, especially Hassan Haskins with Blake Corm out. He carried the ball for 35 times, a buck 54, had another 50 yards receiving, a 200 total yardage game on Saturday. Just They're getting back to, we're going to pound you to death, and we're going to play good defense, and our quarterback's just not going to make mistakes. And that's exactly what they're doing. Um so I'm not calling for Harbaugh's job. I changed my opinion because he was able to beat Penn State. And again, that was the road to redemption game. You're probably losing to Ohio State. You're two. You're pr- going to be two touchdown underdogs in assuming you can kind of keep on track and beat Maryland this week and put up points, which everyone puts up points on Maryland in Simeon's defense. Thanks. And so you just... But you beat him. It's like if he fine leaves and takes an NFL job or whatever, he does, he won't take another college job. But if he leaves and takes an NFL job, it's like okay. Anyway, I do who I do think they where I'm going with this is they should hire Mike Hart to be their next football coach and not let Mike Hart leave that building. Uh-huh. Mike Hart is exactly who you want. He is, and again, kind of a little weird for me to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. He be an He'd be the first African American coach at the University of Michigan. He recruits really well. He knows what it is to be a Michigan man, and he absolutely loves the university. So I can't believe that he got into coaching. Spent two years at Indiana before even Harbaugh brought him on. So anyway, that's what it is. That was the week in review. Do you, oh the did you see the sixty two yard field goal by the Texas Tech? Tick, kicker to win the game? That ended up hitting... Oh, no, that was a different one. I thought that was the one that hit the... Uh, no, that is the one that hit the cheerleader. 
I'm pretty sure. Oh, I, I don't know if it hit the cheerleader. 62 yards in college, that's a leg. That's a rocket right that's there. That's a rocket. So I'm looking up Nick Sabian's, Nick Sabian's, wow, coaching tree. Mm-hmm. Um, just for kicks and giggles, because I was trying to figure kicks out and gigs. Who, who was the guy who went and... Um, Frit, who was the guy who went to FIU? And it turns out it was Bitch Jones, by the way. Just, just so you know. So I'm yeah, I was no, wrong I, there. Yeah, I knew that. But go ahead. I think I am thinking of Steve Sarkeesian, uh, who's now Butch Jones is now at Arkansas State. Apparently, Steve Sarkeesian. Where did he go? Oh, he was the Atlanta Falcons. That's why I'm thinking of. Oh, he was okay. twenty-eight to three. Um, but there are. People who I'm surprised that are from the Nick, uh, that are from the Nick Saban coaching tree. First of all, didn't know Jason Garrett was an uh, assistant under him. Um, but the more impressive ones here, more recently, um, Billy Napier, Louisiana. He's going to be a hot look for yep. a head coaching job mm-hmm. this year. Um, Mel Tucker, Michigan State's yep. head coach, and he's going to be a hot look. Yep. Joe Judge, the Giants head coach. Yep. Didn't know that. Um, oh, Freddie Kitchen, also, who's also with the Giants as well. He was the head coach of the Browns. Um, good job getting rid of him. Uh, obviously, Butch Jones, Steve Sark, and Charlie uh, Charles Huff, the new Marshall, Marshall head coach. Just very interesting. I didn't realize that. He also has had some duds. Um, like Adam Gase as well. Oh, Mario Cristobal is the other one that I was thinking of. So Josh McDaniels was also his head coach. It was also uh, he was under him at Michigan State. He was a graduate assistant at Michigan State. Yes. So just some just some funds there. All right, Captain. But, all right. All right. Hey, I'm not. You can't call me Captain Boring. No, Come at me. no. I, I, you're right. First, my cocaine of his, of excitement. You're absolutely I have, right. That was some good, freaking. Oh, also the head coach of James Madison. Oh, who FBS school? So congratulations. FBS school. Who you. also will be? Oh no, they're coming up to the FCS. That's right. I forgot the FBS. That's what you just said. Okay, yep. moving on. Okay, great. All righty. So cocaine is kicked in. Number eleven Baylor going on the road at seven and three Kansas State University and Simeon. Oh, we're doing this. And okay. Simeon's like, why, Captain Boring, are we doing this game? Because Kansas State's favored, you idiot. Uh, Kansas State's favored over Baylor. Yes. Okay, that stupid. Move on. Okay, no, I'm joking. <laughs> Your breakdown. <laughs> oh, do you honestly? This is the this is the breakdown. Ready? Here it is. Yeah. Which team can't runs the football better? Done. Yeah, I can't, can't believe Kansas State. Done. Favorite. That's it. They're not even that. I mean, they're good, but they're not that good. So I think a lot of this is Baylor just beat Oklahoma, which they haven't done like at all in the past like 15 years. So can Baylor run? Because Baylor has to run to be effective. Okay, Baylor's fa- Kansas State's favored by negative one. That's, That's what the I said. Right, man. That's not really that favor. Uh, well, That's betting favor. They're a three-loss unranked team. Okay, no, no three-loss team should be ranked. <clears throat> Mississippi State. So can Baylor run the football? Can they come? More importantly, can they come down from Oklahoma, Kansas State? Can you stop Baylor's run game? Period. End of discussion. And can Kansas State kind of force some turnovers there? Kansas State is a good team. They lost to they lost close to Oklahoma. They lost close to Oklahoma State, I believe. So they're they're a good team. And this is Baylor. You know, you're gonna get a. Probably you're going to get another shot if you're Baylor at Oklahoma, but you got first got to take care of business on the road at a three thirty game at Kansas State in Manhattan, Kansas. Over under is fifty. I like Baylor in this situation. I just think Dave Aranda is going to have them swag alicious up and again. You got to run the football, Gary Bohannon. You got to take care of the football. He's been doing that. I've gone the times I've gone against Baylor, they've burned me, 
But the one time I picked Baylor, and they've done me some good, so I'm going to roll with Baylor uh, out as outright winners in this situation. That was Carson Wentz's head coach. That's who's yes. coaching at Kansas State yes. right now. You are correct. So, again, it's not like Kansas State doesn't have the coaching staff and the championship swag themselves. It's just that they're not as talented well, you have as to remember, Baylor. in the 2000s, they were top five team every year. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you want to do this? Because this is your school, 8-2 and two SMU at number 5 Cincinnati. Here's the problem with SMU. They have back-to-back losses, Houston, and then last week to whoever they lost to. I forget. It was stupid. That kind of screwed Cincinnati over. I'm not gonna they lie. did, yes. SMU's back-to-back losses. Now SMU's unranked. SMU likes to throw the ball around. SMU is a completely different team on the road than they are at home, and they're on the road against Cincinnati. They love to throw the ball around, but can they move the ball on Cincy's stifling defense? And also, SMU allows 405 yards a game. Yikes. Cincinnati allows 100 and, uh, I'm sorry, 315 yards a game. Um, Simeon, do, does Cincinnati, they're favored by 11 and a half. They need to at least cover, but they need to look good covering. Or do they need to win by 20, 25? If you're Cincinnati, you want to win by 20, 25. The question is, can you win by 20 or 25? Because it's not like, is this game at in in Dallas or is this in No, it's in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. So you need to win by 20 or 25 points, it, I think. <sighs> Over or under 65, what do you think of that? I don't like it. I could see it happening. I wouldn't bet yeah, on it, though. I, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take Cincinnati. I don't like the 11.5 number because Cincinnati is, again, one of those teams. One week they'll put up 20. Again, SMU is not a very good defensive team. Cincinnati should just absolutely annihilate them in terms of they should just ball control. Cincinnati has lost, did lose their top running back forward for the season. I'm going to take the under. So I'm taking Cincinnati to win, but I'm telling you to bet the under. That's a big number. And normally when it's big numbers like this, I just... Cincinnati's they have a legit defense with two legit NFL corners, draftable NFL corners on their roster. So I think that that kind of plays a factor since an SMU is a completely different team, as I said, on the road as they are compared to at home. So take the under. That's a big number to hit. But take Cincinnati to win. And if I had to guess, I'm going to say it's going to be closer than even the cover. And Cincinnati, I mean, you're in danger of not only... So not only do you need help in front of you, you need Alabama to lose to Georgia. You need Oregon to maybe lose to Utah. You need Ohio State to fumble. But then you got teams behind you. You got Oklahoma State, who could jump you because their schedule's better. You got Michigan, who's... Some have made the argument should be ahead of you as it is because of their win this past weekend on the road. Uh, it, and don't forget the lovely, lovely Notre Dame. <laughs> and no, Notre, a, a, a great point, Simeon. Uh, Notre Dame's a one-loss team. To, now, again, you to have... To me, that's the best one-loss team right now. Notre, kind of known... All the teams behind Cincinnati, I feel like, are finding who they are a little bit. Well, mm-hmm. really behind Michigan and Michigan State. Like, the Oklahoma State, the... Um, the 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 Notre Dames, the Baylors, the Old Miss, they're kind of finding who they are. We're going to run the football. We're going to be explosive on the ground, make timely passing plays, and play good defense. Now, here's the deal. The last two games, because we're at the last two games. We are. I, I can't uh, believe we're already here. I know. Same. So Cincinnati has SMU this week, and then they have Southern Florida. Uh, who did SMU lose to last week? They didn't lose. No. They lost to Memphis the week after they lost to Houston. Houston, Memphis, and then they rebounded against UCF, who doesn't play defense anyway. But, again, they were at home. play football, basically. They were at road for two losses and then at home. Yeah. So, it's you have to look at kind of the last two. You kind of shake your head at some. 
I don't think MSU is going to jump them. Oklahoma State could jump them. And that's kind of it. You do have a few teams behind them, but if they win out and they still have a championship game, mind you, against most likely Houston, Houston, and if they win that as well, it's going to be hard to put up basically a 13 win, 14, 13 win undefeated team from a from the Power Six. Screw you guys, Americans of Power Five. At this point, Power Six. We're a Power Six conference in the playoff. You mean not put them in? Not put them in. I 100% agree, but... The only thing it gets crazy is if... Which is not possible. But if every team but, at, let's say, Alabama wins out. That's the only way. Which isn't... Also, which isn't possible because you still have... Who's the other team in there that is... But it, sorry, there's one can, other team. Can, who can play, I, oh, Michigan and Ohio can, State. So, yeah, so, can, so can I run this by you real quick? Just a yeah, quick, a quick, a quick scenario. Yeah. Alabama beats Georgia in the SEC title game. Oregon okay. wins the Pac-12. Okay. Michigan beats Ohio State. Beats Ohio State and wins the Big Ten. Yeah. Does Michigan then jump Cincinnati? And and Cincinnati's un, unbeaten. Because I think the answer to that is yes. Michigan, a Michigan, Michigan yeah, would I think have, you have a to close they have loss a better Mich- season. Michigan State on the road against Penn State, who's probably the best defense in the Big Ten, one of the best, second best, maybe right. to Wisconsin. Beat was a ranked Wisconsin team twice, and Ohio State. I think you would have. I think you would have to. I think the only other team who would have a better season would be your unranked number one team. Yeah. I think at that point, if Michigan wins out, they and now again I, I do not expect them to win out. No, neither of us do. Neither of us. Um, do. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they would have barely like this much of a better season than I think an unranked since an unranked Cincinnati. I, this much? I, I don't. Th- I, I think. Okay, I, maybe maybe. I think not the gap- skin of your teeth. Not the skin of your well, teeth. Well, no. I think what I'm saying inches. is maybe like a dick. I, I I'm. <laughs> Fair, but I'm saying that Michigan would have five or six ranked wins, and Cincinnati would have, assuming like they beat Houston two, two right? Well, th- well, yeah, because SMU needed to be yeah SMU losing to Memphis really screwed yes, them over at one hundred percent, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. The American isn't that strong. I call them the Power Six because let's be honest, they are. They are so, but and also, but Cincinnati had a big blowout over UCF. It was a seven-point game in the fourth quarter. They kind of got late touchdowns to make yeah. that lead bigger. I'm just, I'm just looking at, I'm just looking at the top like eight, ten, uh, yeah, nine. So, I'm just looking who has the most likely to lose: Alabama, Oregon. Michigan and Oklahoma State. Those are the most likely teams to lose. Yeah, yeah. in the top. Nine. Yeah, no, I, I would agree, one hundred percent. So, yeah, I, I mean, mean it'd be, I, so everything. They're, I, they're, they're, uh, they need two. The, they need Alabama and Oregon. To, they need either Alabama, Oregon, or OSU to lose. Yeah, I mean, the committee has said it. No, no, sorry. They need two of those teams to lose. The the committee has set it up that if Oregon or Alabama lose, you could bump Cincinnati in there. The problem is the two teams directly behind Cincinnati is Michigan State and Michigan. If Michigan State beats Ohio State this weekend, now Michigan State in the last three weeks has two top ten wins, one on the road, one at home, who right now that team's ranked ahead of you, which most people think is asinine. I do not. I think Michigan is the better team over Michigan State. So now, do you just put Cincinnati at four? Or you can make the argument, Michigan State should jump Michigan, Cincinnati, and Ohio State. Well, you have Ohio State basically dropping to, let's just say 10. Let's just be nice. We put Wake Forest in, at nine. We're spitballing here. So Ohio State drops out of the top four. Michigan State has to be ranked top five. Yeah. And I mean, like, four 
let's just say they replace Ohio State. That's basically what would happen. Yeah, yeah. Basically, that's what I foresee that happen Again, Cincinnati... Cincinnati's in the worst, but also best position they can be in. And since, yeah. and it, and we kind of got off topic here, but I will bring it back around to what we were talking about. This is why Cincinnati has to win big on Saturday. Yeah. They are an 8-2 SMU. No, absolutely not. Take me down the rabbit hole. I just want to make sure that the viewers remember what we're talking about. It's 11 and a half points. They need to win by at least 18 and they need, yeah. and it can't be a late cover. It needs to be twenty points. No, it can be a late cover as long as it's fourteen points in a late cover. Fair enough. Fair enough. I don't care if it's. I don't care. I don't. Yeah, they they need to own. They need to own for the, the next three games. Yeah, one hundred percent. They need to make to them. Finish. Yes, they need to make them their bitch. Sorry, ma'am. It's just the case. Number twenty five. Arkansas is at yeah. number two, Alabama. Alabama is allowing three, 83 rushing yards per game. Arkansas runs the ball for 215-odd yards. So can Arkansas, because Arkansas really doesn't have much of a pass game off of that. They need the running game to be able to pass because it's a lot of play action. Can Arkansas run the ball on Alabama? Because Arkansas couldn't run the ball earlier this year on Georgia. And Alabama... I talked about it. Can you run the football? So the two things I brought up that is why this team, why a lot of people think that this team is unimpressive, is because they don't run the football consistently and they don't play defense consistently. Can they do both of those things at home against the number twenty-five Arkansas team? I think the answer is yes. The number is so big at twenty and a half that it's hard for me to justify taking that. No, you you take you take Arkansas, Arkansas plus, plus the points. What's the over under? That's what I'm interested 57 in. 57 and a half. Now that Micaiah said earlier, I think just to be spicy, if you want a spicy bet that might win you some money because okay. I'm sure the odds on it are pretty good, you take the over. You have to remember that this is an inconsistent defensive team for Nick Saban, which is unheard of for yep. him. So, Arkansas has a good enough attack that you might actually break the over on that one. I don't. Do they have, you know, twenty four points, and you know they have and 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 uh, I'm trying to do the math here. Do they have the twenty four points well, and Alabama has well, the other thirty six? Well, well, this is a, this is That's a the question. Per- well, this is a perfect uh, Georgia Tennessee. It was forty one seventeen. So that's your 58 right there, right? Yeah. So is it going to be a game like that, or is it going to be closer? Because the 41-17, that's not covering if you're Arkansas. Right. So so you think that they're going to cover and it's over? No. I'm saying if you want just a spicy oh, bet. Sure, I sure, think, sure. I think you're pretty close to that. I think the over is a better bet than the cover. Uh, the over is a, better, is a spicier bet than the um which, than the cover which is but the, I think the cover is more of a sure bet. Okay. All right. Well then you you heard it here first. Bama wins, Arkansas covers. Again, Bama Bama is still in jeopardy. They haven't locked up the West yet. If Bama loses against Arkansas this week and then the Iron Bowl next week and Old Miss wins out, Old Miss is in the title game against Georgia. Yeah. So this this is a Alabama just has to win one of the two. Alabama also is fighting for a top playoff position because a lot of people seem to think that with Alabama sitting at two, even with a close loss to Georgia in the title game, Alabama's still in, which would totally wreck Cincinnati. I don't believe that. Simeon doesn't believe that. No. Pac-12's last shot is Oregon, and Oregon is three-point underdogs on the road. Saturday night at Utah. Don't they have a championship game still? Oh, because they're Utah's in the North. That's right. So, so both conference, both divisions, I believe, are already locked up. So this is a twofer. Utah and Oregon get two shots at each other. Oh, Utah is in the South. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So this is not only this is Oregon shot. Right, Oregon has to win this game to be in, 
But then they right. have to do it again in two weeks in Vegas on a Friday night, the night of your bachelor party. Yes, that game will be on when we get back to the house. Spoiler alert. Um, I'm okay with that. Just, on, nice in the back, just on in the background, in between beer pong. Um, Utah's 24... Listen, Utah's favored. They're, they're balanced offensively. They're, since they figured out the quarterback position, they lost a game. They were sitting there at 1-2 and two earlier in the season, and then they kind of just got back to Utah, which is we're going to run the football. We're going to be physical at the offensive and defensive line positions. We're going to play consistent, consistently at the quarterback position, and we're just going to ram the ball down your throat, and that's exactly what they've done. Can they stop Oregon's rushing attack. Oregon has to run the ball in order to win. Utah allows uh, 339 rushing yards per game. Uh, defense has not been good for Oregon. By the way, they give up 367, 248 through the air, and 119 on the ground. So they're kind of more built to stop the run, but they give up a lot of yards through the air. Anthony Brown has to play well as well. So Anthony Brown, in the, if you're going to run a heavy run attack like a lot we're seeing throughout college football, your quarterback can't turn the ball over and has to make plays when they're, they are there. Anthony Brown has to be able to run against Utah's defense and not turn the ball over. And in kind of the – during their uh, Cal, Arizona, and Stanford, where it was all close games and then they lost to Stanford – Anthony Brown was not playing well. He is playing well of late, but Oregon's defense gives up a lot of points and a lot of yards to basically everyone but Washington, and Washington blows it right out the keister. So listen, 59. <sighs> that's, another ga- that's another game where the, sex- the spicy bet is to take the over on that one. Cause, cause that's like, you might as well call it sixty. Like, yeah, that's what I mean, I mean, is. I mean. So you're looking at a thirty-five twenty. You, you're looking yeah. at. Oh my goodness! I. Who do you got in this game? I don't. I, I haven't seen enough film on either team to really make a good educated guess. You know what Oregon's capable of. They're capable of going on the road, hostile environment, right? Because they yeah. did it earlier this year against Ohio State. It's going to be easier than Ohio State. That's the thing. I, I, I think I'm taking Oregon in both games. Oh, you're going to get them both. So you're calling your shot already in the Pac-12 title. I you. It, so I just the thing that's I hanging tr- me I up is them too much. Oregon's lack of defense is eventually going to bite them in the butt. Oh, I don't think they'll do well when they're in the playoff if they let them in. But yeah, I just don't think an, a Utah team who's been extremely inconsistent, even at home, two home games really because Utah Nevada. Um, I just nah. Sorry, fam. <sighs> I just I don't think so. I mean, I know they're inconsistent, so I guess I do know something. I I, I gotta do. I know I shouldn't do it, but I gotta do it. It's okay. I'm I'm taking Utah here. Okay. I just I, think I, I with it, it. it being at night, Utah has found their identity. Oregon's kind of finding their way a little bit, and Oregon will get up for this game. Uh, but it's Kyle Winningham, and it is physical smash mouth, run the ball. Also, I think you take the under. Uh, listen, I'm not hating any of those all, facts. All right, all right, fine. And then the game of the day, as we kind of look to wrap up here, number seven, Michigan State going to Columbus. They are 19-point underdogs to the number four Ohio State Buckeyes. Here, here's what I know about Ohio State. Go ahead, tell me. Their defensive line is their problem. Their box, <laughs> phrasing, nice. is their problem. You always have good skill position play, you know, linebacker, uh, sorry, cornerback, um, wide receiver, uh-huh. running back, that sort of stuff. Those speed positions. But this year they don't have that Chase Young, 
that Bosa brother, look at you that knowing sort things. of guy down in the and that's when you have Walker. I want to say Keyshawn. That's not right. Um, it's not. Have, it's Kenneth Walker. Kenneth. <laughs> wow, that's a much whiter name than I thought it was. <laughs> oh, that uh, might be racist. <laughs> it might be. Yeah. Well, I just called the guy Keyshawn. Um, <laughs> He's, he's, he's probably, probably going to win the Heisman, name. so it's fine. Uh, uh, you, <laughs> that's going to be what the issue. If they can stop the running game, the Ohio State will be able to win. But that's where they're going to get also bitten in the butt from Michigan's perspective, too. So he, here's Michigan State's problem. They give up 329 yards passing a game. Yeah, I... He, and you, you're going okay. against probably the best passing team in the entire country. The the issue that you could have is the fact that this could be a shootout. Oh, the over under 66, and I'm taking the over. Yeah, that's your problem. Because if Kenneth Walker there you can have five TDs by himself, right? It's not. Po- it's very possible so that M- Michigan State not CJ Young. Who's the quarterback? Uh, CJ Stroud. Stroud, and, sorry, and and and, and that got in him and Bryce Young, and and that kind of goes to, to my next point. So uh, the keys for Ohio State is can CJ Stroud play without mistakes? Yeah, can they run the football right against a Michigan State defense that isn't going to let them run the football? And is Michigan State is probably going to take the same approach they did against Michigan? Was go ahead and move the ball in between the twenties. We're going to make you kick field goals, and. Every team that has made Ohio State earn it down the field, so not giving them big plays, those are the teams. Where, those are the games where it becomes close for Ohio State. Those are the games where C.J. Stroud has two turnovers and doesn't look like the Heisman contender. The Oregon game and the Penn State game, and kind of yep. it just you know when you you have to make Ohio State earn it. Michigan State's going to try, but their pass yep. defense is. All atrocious, all yeah. full, and so I just think Ohio State's going to get whatever they want. I think, I, I think it's also closer than nineteen. I don't like that. That, but I Ohio State. I'm picking them to win. I'm saying, do what you want betting wise. I'm only going to count two against me, but I might bet all three just because I'm feeling spicy. Do you think this is like a thirty-five, forty-two sort of game? I do. I think this is And guys, a, we're not I, kicking field goals today. I, we're not kicking no, field goals in this I, game. I, I think that this is a 38, 31, 45, 34 high-scoring shootout. I think it, it's well over 66. I think it's closer than 19 because Mel Tucker just brings that angry energy you need in a rivalry game. But I think Ohio State gets it done. Oh, and by the way, as a Michigan fan, Ohio State... You want to do your job so we can go for all the marbles next weekend? Yeah, this would be great if we could do that. Let, let, you know, let's run it back to 2016. Yeah. Let's go. I want another shot because JT was short in 2016, and CJ Stroud can't run the football. So, you know what? I want another piece of the action, okay? Let's go for all the marbles, but you got to beat Michigan State this week and cover up for the referees blowing it against us couple weeks ago let's go listen you guys will be i will call you soft on next week's podcast if you lose yes this game. absolutely so i you think you will be the softest bunch of people and fans by the way come at me if you guys lose the game so uh we it's ohio state to win closer than 19 and over 66 however you want to bet on that is fine i will probably bet the over and ohio state to win so that wraps it up. I, I'm. We're going to the Maryland game this weekend. That's what we're both watching. Yep. We're both excited about that. Uh, Carrie's coming along, so that's going to be awesome. And I'm forever third wheeling, by yeah, the way. Yeah, well, actually, it's the other way around. Me and Carrie are going to the game, and Simeon's coming along. Um, so I'm going to try to catch some of the Ohio State game. I'm sure there will be plenty of Michigan fans around there who will have it on, so I'll try to catch bits and pieces. I'll also have it on my phone. Um it's good. It's we're in for a heck of a last two weeks. This is just absolutely. And looking back on it as a Michigan fan, this has been an impressive season. 
I think I think that's the big. I don't. That's why I didn't say fire hall bar after this year. I, it, 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 it's been a very looking back on it week to week. I was like, oh come on, we're we're just gonna get punched. Listen, Cade McNamara's got something where he doesn't blink. Listen, he got smashed and fun when he fumbled the football. He got up, patient, and what he does so well is. Just whatever the defense is giving you. If that means fourth down and we punt, that's fine. But guess what? He's he, a he, you can tell he's a leader. Yeah, there. there's uh, a reason that because he is less skilled than sorry, Cade. He is a little bit less skilled than JJ McCarthy, but you can tell he's a leader, and that's what Michigan needs. Also, shout out to Jim Harbaugh. He clearly does not want to do post game interviews. <laughs> Clear, clearly not. He he wants to. He he hates doing on field post game interviews with a yep. burning passion. He, and that was his like his first one that he was able to, and then he's like, just talk to this guy. Talk to this and, guy right here, and then just ran away. Yeah, <laughs> which was a gave a much better interview for the record. So, so. but also Michigan. Also, let's not trip up and let's not take Mar- yeah. Maryland likely. They throw for like. 400 yards a game, and they can put up like points in a in a hurry. Now their defense yep. is trash, so yep. you should be able to run the ball. But Aiden, and, Aiden and Ajabo, come on, Aiden and Ajabo should win some award. They've been outstanding, absolutely been outstanding. Okay. Which one's getting drafted besides both of them? Well, Are they both seniors? Uh, no, Ajabo can come back. Aiden's go- probably going to go top 10. Ajabo has worked himself into the first round, according to Todd McShay. Um, yeah. I think Ajabo should come back for one more year. If he does that, that next year's defense is going to be legit. Guys, look, Ajabo, for you, look at what it did. Look at one more year what it did for Chase Winovich. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson as well. I mean, Aiden Hutchinson wasn't a first round pick last year. Yeah. If he were so, to come out. So. You, it's not like you're going to have a lot of... I say this now, and then someone just shows up out of nowhere. It's not like you're going to have a lot of competition next year, and you get paid more, and listen, uh, just go get the money, because you're doing the brain damage anyway. So, do you have a lock of the week? Dude, I have... I... I the you're problem on a hot with my locks of the right, week... Right, right I, I think so. I for, Oh, yeah, because I picked right last week, because I'm, you know, piss excellence. Here's the problem. Is my locks of the weeks, I wanted them to be spicy, because I can make an easy lock of the week, right? Right. Like, we're recording this Wednesday. What's the game on tonight? There's some, like, stupidly... Memphis is playing Houston, okay? San Diego State's playing UNLV. Like, those are technically... George is playing Charleston Southern, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, um... <laughs> If I had to, like, this is Cupcake Week. Texas A&M, Prairie View, Mississippi yes, State, Yes, in the Tennessee SEC, State. it is Cupcake Week in the oh SEC. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Pittsburgh, well, Virginia. Well, I'm going to give my lock of the week. Actually, what I'm going to do. Oh, here's my game to watch. Okay. I Before I give you your lock of the week. Okay. Watch, legitimately, watch the University of Texas San Antonio take on the UAB. Do you want to give a lock of the week? Because I think that they're only, like, four-point favorites, right? Four and a half point favorite. Want to give a lock of the week right there? You know, just for kicks and giggles, because you know we're road runners all the way yep. this year. Meet me. Lock in, lock in those road runners. Okay, of- I'm actually going to turn the last game I covered, so Michigan State, Ohio State, into my lock of the week. I'm not saying nice. my lock of the week is not Ohio State. My lock of the week is the over. So that's what I'm going to do. It's 66 right now. Go out and grab it before it keeps going up and up and up and up. But remember, Michigan State and Michigan went for 70. So just keep that in mind. And Ohio State's a way better offense than Holy Michigan crap. is. Um, also, take the under in this game. Sorry, I just I looked at this. They've only allowed 70 y- rushing yards this season. Yeah. Yeah, they they play good defense. Uh, also, my what was my lock of the week was UVA and Pittsburgh. If Brendan oh, right. Armstrong plays for Virginia, by the way, this is for the coastal right here. If Brendan Armstrong uh-huh. plays for Virginia, the over under sixty six take the over. Virginia doesn't stop anyone. Neither does Pittsburgh. Dude. And Virginia throws ball round. <laughs> he throws around. Listen, dude, this guy's bit Frank Harris, the QB for the Roadrunners. Yep. He's 2,300 yards, 20 TDs, five interceptions. Hey, listen, for a program that only started 10 years ago, they are. Um, this is an historic season for the Roadrunners. 
All right, everyone. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, moving on to the end. This has been another edition of the 4th and 1 Podcast. As always, wash your hands, you filthy animals. Hey, by the way, we made it to the end. My computer didn't crash. Hey, look at that. Hey, Simeon's right again. I have crash. a sound bite for that. Hey, well, Jack, here's the deal. Hey, I'm the best there is, plain and simple. Hey, I mean, I wake up in the morning, I kiss hey, excellence. I deserve a sound bite for that. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Hey.